Okay, welcome Mike and Heather and Dawson and Marissa and for all of you who are watching um, via the archive webinar and those who are coming soon. Uh, this is actually the very last webinar of the Math 159 class and we do have a bunch of stuff to do but I want to you know mention that um, class is going to be over soon. Hopefully it'll go it went well for you and more importantly hopefully that you feel like you're prepared and you will be prepared for your statistics class because that's the purpose of this class. It's the only purpose. Uh, I want to do let you know that if you have not already signed up, if you plan on taking it in the summer or the fall, then I do recommend you sign up pretty soon, especially if you can take the online class, the official online class, because that tends to fill up really fast. You know, it often fills up and um, you don't, then you don't get in. <laughs> so you can only take the number of people that are allowed in the class. So just let you know that you do want to make sure that you register if you're planning on taking the statistics class. Um, so that you're ready for it. Um, let me share my desktop and talk about what we're gonna do today. Okay, so here's the agenda. Uh, we're gonna start out with, um, today is all about sets in terms of the new material. And it's, it's not that hard conceptually. There's a little bit of language and a little bit of kind of formatting. But other than that, um, most people like this section or this, these sections, I guess. So we'll talk about the complement of a set. We'll talk about the union of two sets. We'll talk about the intersection of two sets. And then we'll look pictorially and we'll look at Venn diagrams and how you can look at a Venn diagram and understand sets in that way. So that is the very end of this class, the last thing that you need in order to succeed in statistics in terms of the mathematics of statistics. Then of course, we'll talk about the final exam, which there's not, I don't need to spend a lot of time talking about because there's no surprises at all. It's basically your homework, you know, one problem from each assignment, that's it. So, but I'll, I'll talk about it in a little more detail, but there's not much to say because it's, it, there's, there's no surprises. I think you'll agree. Um, so that is a plan. And I do want to mention, because again, the whole point of this class is to get ready for stats. Make sure that you don't kid yourself. Statistics is a lot harder than this class. So be ready. It's not just that statistics is a five unit class and there's a four unit class. Um, it really is a lot harder. So be ready that when you do take the statistics class, to make sure that you have enough time in your schedule to be able to get the work done, to go to tutors when you need them, which you will need to do. Just about everyone needs a tutor at one point or another. And to, um, and to ask questions when you need it. Okay, so there's gonna be, there's a lot of work in stats. That's why we have this class. Because if we didn't, I think everyone would fail. And that's, uh, that would be bad. But again, don't fool yourself. If you don't have much time to take the class, don't register for the class because you won't pass. So make sure you have the time. For most people, it takes at least 15 hours a week. Okay, some take longer. Just to let you know that. Okay, um, just a second. I see something in the chat, but I didn't have it open. Uh, someone asked, are we having the stat? Are you having stats in the fall? And the answer is I am teaching the purely online like this statistics class in the fall. Um, if you're asking about our you as in y'all Lake Tahoe Community College Institute, we always have it. And we have it both, um, so we're gonna have it both um, online and face-to-face -face every quarter. Um, we have it online in the summer, but not by me. Because to be honest, I spend half my nights in the summer in a tent backpacking. And I'm not going to give that up. So sorry about that. Uh, and the other thing is summer is a six-week class. And which means instead of 15 hours a week, we're talking 30 hours a week. Because if you half the number of weeks, you have to double the number of um, work hours per week. Because it's the same number of hours, whether you take it in the summer or in the fall, in terms of learning and work. So be ready for that. And don't do other stuff if you're taking stats in the summer. 
Okay. Um, but I do want to warn, warn you that stats is harder. I'll do my best to teach you. I've been teaching stats forever, but be ready. It, it is harder. Um, so, you know, but I'm, I'll be here for you. The other thing, if you're interested, maybe I'll share the link. Just a minute, take a minute. You know how there's a YouTube, um, a YouTube link for this particular um, class that I set up? I don't know if any of you um, go to YouTube for that or you go directly in Canvas. But because we're in the pandemic time, I actually am giving full length lectures for the statistics class, first time ever, instead of once a week kind of lectures like I'm doing in this class. And those are, give me a minute, takes a second to share that. Just a second. Share. That's the YouTube playlist link. And there's a lot of hours because again, it's it's five hours, it's like five hours a week, but they have quizzes too. So it's it's more like three and a half hours a week of statistics lectures. And there's still two more to go because I'm giving one tomorrow and giving one Thursday. So if you uh, have nothing better to do <laughs> over the summer and you want to prep yourself even more for stats, then you can watch these lectures. They're on YouTube, so obviously they're public. And uh, I'll tell you what I do every morning is I work out. Any of you guys work out? Like in a gym or whatever? No. I work out to lectures. So I watched a, I, I don't want to scare you, but I watched a graduate, uh, high level graduate level algebra topology lecture. I've been watching all courses this, uh, this month. Um, that's what I do. So if you work out, work out and work your brain out at the same time. You could watch the lecture while you're working out. Okay, and it's low stress because you're not even in the class. You're just watching on YouTube. So that's what I do personally. And you're welcome to do that too. Okay, and I shared you the playlist. So there it is. I don't know if that helps or not, uh, but don't get scared either by watching because remember it's, you're not gonna be doing homework and all that stuff if you're just watching it, just be relaxed. Any questions, any other questions before I start talking about unit skill? Okay. Oh, that's right, you're able to see this. So you can see there's, they're pretty long. They're like almost two, in between an hour and a half and two hours each for most of these. Some are over two hours. But just for fun, if you really wanna get prepared and you got some time in the summer, then that's something you can do. Any questions about anything? Okay, if there's no questions, then uh, let's go into new material. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, and I have other lectures on YouTube by chapter, but these are the longer ones because it's again, the first time I've ever done it this way. Okay, and they're also the newest ones because literally they're not even done yet. I'm giving one tomorrow. Um, but they will be added to the playlist as I give them the last two. Um, so let's talk about new stuff and we want to talk about sex. So um, last time, last week, you did set notation and remember you were able to say, hopefully, because it was in the um, assignment, is you could say that, you know, you might have, what is a set of all things that are less than three, something like that. Um, then there's the word complement, and we haven't used that word yet, but it's an important word. And by the way, it does not mean, I think you're wonderful, I'm gonna give you a compliment. Nothing to do with that. So the compliment means the opposite. Let me write that out. The compliment means the opposite. So let's put that in red because it's important. Okay, so the complement means the opposite. So you want to think about 
what is the exact opposite of saying this? Okay, and another word you'll see is the word not. And that means compliment. In fact, I think I put it in my model post for last week's. Okay. Um, so let's do an example. So suppose you um, roll a die. Let me write six sided die. And consider um, set A to be the event that you roll higher than a four. Find So the first thing is new notation. So this is read a complement. So find a complement. So if you see a superscript C, that means complement. Okay. So here's the way I like to think about it, especially when you're rolling dice, is that let's just write down all the different die rolls that can happen. Hopefully you all know. What are the different die rolls? What are the, right, the whole list of die rolls of all the possibilities. We're just rolling one die. The hint is it's easy. <laughs> yeah. So one, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five, comma six. Okay. And then you say, let's figure out what is A. Oops, that should be the event, not even. So A is the event that you roll it higher than a four. So what numbers are higher than a four? Yeah, five and a six. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put five and six and I'm gonna put those in red. I think I have to highlight first and then hit red. Okay, so a complement means that it's not that. So to find out the complement, it's all the things that aren't in red. Is that clear? So what is a complement? Yeah, it's going to be one, two, three, four, because this is the black one ones that aren't red anymore. And that's a compliment. I want to mention something that's kind of weird. This will be used a lot if you wait until winter to take the class, even if you take it with me. Anyone know why? I hope at least. That's all I can say. <laughs> We're all hoping, by the way. What's the difference between fall and winter quarter? No levels, nah. <laughs> we might have we might have snow in December and, and, and November in Tahoe at least. What are you really hoping for? The whole the whole world is hoping. Okay, we're hoping for a vaccine. And the hope is that we're gonna be back to reality in winter. And the reason why it's gonna change everything is that if we're in winter then instead of taking a proctorio based cam webcam watching you test you actually go into a room in a library if you're taking online you find a library in your local town and then they hand you a paper and pencil they well they hand you they hand you the paper and then you you bring your own pencil and then you take a test like you're used to instead of taking the whole thing online and you get to type things out and it's a pain um, and in that case, you use a TI-84 calculator. And cool. TI-84 calculators can't handle greater than, they can only handle less than or equal to. So with the TI-84 calculator, the complement is an absolute must in statistics. On the other hand, if you're doing it 
with the computer, you're going to use the computer, and then the computer's going to can handle it. So it just has to do with TI. Um, so that's just a note. So depending when you take it, it may or may not be very important. So that's compliments. Any questions on this idea of compliments so far? Okay. Um, I'll do more, but I want to do more in a more complicated way where we're kind of doing it with the other stuff. Let's now talk about intersections. So the intersection of two sets, let's call them A and B, is denoted as follows. And I need to make an equation. You do A, and then So that's an intersection symbol that we're looking at. So that's red A intersection B. Kind of an upside down U. And that is intersection. Okay. In words, it is written as A and B. So the word and is synonymous with the word intersection. Just like the word not is synonymous with the word complement. Any questions so far? Okay, so for example, let A be the set of numbers less than eight. And let B be the set of numbers at least four. Find, and I'm going to copy paste, A intersection B. And we're going to do that using set notation that we talked about last week. So in set notation, by the way, what's the first symbol for set notation always? What do you always type or write? So what's the first thing you always write in any set notation? There we go, yeah. It's the curly brace, open curly brace. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an open curly brace. And now we wanna think about it. We want A intersection B, okay? And that means and, it means both have to be true for it to be in the intersection. So that means that it must be less than eight and at least four. So we can write X. We can write that little uh, vertical line segment thing that means such that. So the lowest number is four. And if we want to be at least four, what symbol do we use next? In fact, I think I need to do it in math symbols. So set of all set of all x, such that four. Okay. So we want it to be at least four. At least four. So when you say at least four, that includes four. So it's x, so four is less than or equal to x. Uh, if you don't know how to do it in the chat, let me put it in the chat so you know. Uh, let me do that you want. So you go less than, and you just do that. <laughs> I know it doesn't look exactly the same, but at least then you're actually saying what's going on. 
Um, and I think you can figure out how you do greater than or equal to also. So you say four is less than or equal to x. Now I'm using Google with insert equations. So I can do it. Okay. And then we want it to be less than eight. That one doesn't have the equal sign. I think I just do less than. Oops. Less than eight. And then always close it. And that is the A intersection B. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, let's do another one. I like rolling die because everyone knows that you, it's got six sides, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Whereas if I use dice, you may not be familiar with dice, especially the new generation. I mean, not dice, some um, cards. A lot of new people, new generation don't play cards. But hopefully everyone knows one through six. So suppose you roll two six-sided dice. Okay, let A be the event that the sum of the dice is larger than five and B, let's B, be the event that the dice are paired. So what does paired mean? Yeah, doubles. Okay, that could be two fours or two fives, two sixes, etc. Find and now let's get the pity way of doing it. A complement intersection. So this one puts together the two things we just did. So let's see if you could tell me, and the way you're gonna have to do is you're gonna list all the possibilities. And in this case, possibilities are parentheses, number, comma, parentheses. So for example, if you got a, a five and a two, it'd be parentheses, five, comma, two, and parentheses. Let's see if you can list, and I'll even start you out in terms of notation. that notation <laughs> and then you're going to have a parenthesis so let's see if you can list a complement intersection b so this is where you have to think carefully about what these mean so what could the dice be Let's see if you can pop it into the chat box and see what you get. Any ideas? Give me a minute or two. Okay. So I see one possibility. Any other ideas? Okay, so let's look at it. Okay, so the thing is for it to be A complement intersection B, that means it has to be in both A complement and in B. So I think I'm going to do the and and B first because that one's going to be easier to think about. 
To be in B, that tells us it has to be paired, doubles. So for example, you can't have one comma three because one comma three is not a pair. Okay, you can have, to be in B, you could have six comma six. Do you see that? But it also has to be an A complement. So A means larger than five. So a complement would mean the sum is four or less. Does that help in terms of words? So that means, well, we could have a one comma one. What's the sum of one comma one? It's easy, by the way, very easy. It's two. Two, okay, it's not a trick question. Okay, how about two comma two? And by the way, two is, is not larger than five. Four. How about two comma two? So is that one in it? Yes. Yeah, because, so we could have two comma two because that's not larger than five. Can we have three comma three? No. No, because three plus three is six and six is larger than five. So it's not an A complement. So that's it. Is that totally clear? So I think um, one thing you have to note is sum. Not the individuals, but the sum larger than five. Okay. Um, I don't know if I told you this, but I used to teach a class called the mathematics of gambling. And this is one of the things we had to go through is we had to look at this because we had to talk about, well, is it smart or dumb to play craps? Are there any ways, any strategies to win craps? You heard of the game craps? Basically, you throw two dice, and if, you, if, you, if it lands on what you hoped it land on, you win money. And if it doesn't, you lose money. What do you think? Think there's any good way, any way of winning in craps consistently, you know, in the long term? Yeah, the answer is no. The answer is no. So, no, you can't. Um, so don't even think about going to the casino and winning money in the long term in craps. Okay, but if you but you can think about being the casino and then you're gonna win money as long as people come to you because they're gonna lose. So these are the kind of things that happened. Any questions on this example? Okay, so that is the idea of complements and intersections. So the last piece of kind of uh, putting sets together, talking about things you can do with sets are unions. So that's the next one, definition. Is let A and B be sets. Then A union B is the set of all that are in A, in B, or in both. Any questions on that? So let me give you a fun one. Okay. To get into a bar, there's one set of being over 21 years old. The other set is having a fake ID. So A union B are all the people that will get into the bar. Because you could either be over 21 you could have a fake ID, or you could be over 21 with a fake ID. I don't know why you'd have a fake ID if you're over 21, but you could. <laughs> if you're 25 and you have an ID that says you're 28, <laughs> and you have your real ID also. So that would be an example of an, a union where you can kind of like think about it instead of just a bunch of numbers like I just gave you. Any questions on that? Okay, so. Let's do some examples. Let me um, do the following, actually. 
I don't think I wrote down. A union B. So I realize that probably should be in the definition since I said it, but I didn't write it. So let's do an example. So consider the collection of numbers. Let's go um, whole numbers. So no fractions allowed. Less than 20. Let A be the multiples of 2, and B be the multiples of 3. What is A union B? And let's... um. Copy and paste, so I don't have to work on it. And I think I want to put the definition on the same page. All right. So now we got to think about what is A union B? Okay. Well, 6, 12, 18 are all in A union B, but there's a whole lot more of them. So let's write down what A is first. So A is going to be the set. Well, they're multiples of 2. 2 is a multiple of 2. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Uh, not 20, because we're less than 20. Ah, do it again. Okay, and then B is the set. So what's B? The answer that starts with a three. It's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. Yeah, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. So to get A union B, it means all the things that are either in A or B or both. So I'm going to write down A union B. Is equal to, so I think the easiest is copy and paste the A. Because anything in A is an A union B. And then I need to add the things in B. So three needs to be added in. Six is already in. I don't need to add it again. Nine needs to be added in. Twelve is in. Fifteen needs to be added in. And eighteen is already in, and there's a union B. Any questions? Any questions on a union B? Any questions on that? Okay. Let's see some more. Suppose we're going to do the same example that B is the set of numbers less than eight. Find A intersection B union C. So 
So now we're putting stuff together, and that's important to be able to do. And what does that mean? So the first thing, I like to do it by scanning the numbers. For it to be an A intersection, parenthesis, B union, C, it has to be an A. Is that clear? It's not an A, you have no chance. So I'm going to just copy A and then get rid of what I needed to get rid of. Any questions on that? Okay, so that's our A. Now we need to intersect with B union C, which means it must also be in B union C. So if it's in B, that's good enough. So that means anything that's less than eight stays in there. Is that clear? To be in C, that was in, that was in C. To be in B, it has to be a multiple of three. So notice that eight and 10 aren't in B union C because they're not less than eight, they're not multiples of three, so they're not in the intersection with A. 12 is okay, that's in C. 14 and 16 are not, because they're not in B or C. But 18 is in C, so there's our collection. So I need to ask you this, did I lose anybody? So it's kind of a long story. I lost you? Okay, so if I lost you, let's try this. This is the same thing as I'm gonna write down A. There's our A. And then I'm gonna go intersection. And then I'm gonna put a parenthesis. And then we're gonna have B. And then we're going to have a union. And then we're going to have C. Okay, and C was the set of numbers less than eight. So one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, comma, five, comma, six, comma, seven. I need one more thing. I need. Close the parentheses. Any questions on just substituting what A, B, and C are? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste. And in the parentheses, the order of operations says I need to do the parentheses first. So I need to do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, union. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that means every number I see, union means all those numbers. So in particular, I can replace that with one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, comma, five, comma, six. Six is already in it, comma, seven. And that's dealing with that union. So what I did is I just took 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. I took the union with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 12, 15, 18. Okay. Now I take the intersection of these two sets. So that means it has to be in both of these. So notice one is not in the first one. So it's not in the intersection. Two is in both. So that means it's in the intersection. Three is not, four is in both. And notice six is the next one in both. And eight is not, 10 is not in both because not in the right one. 12 is in both and 18 is in both. Let me put some equal signs to show that that's what I just did. 
Now, who's lost? Got it? Any other questions on, on this example? It's a lot of stuff with sets. So these are kind of the idea of unions and intersections and complements. And they happen in statistics. Yeah, and often they happen as word problems. But the word problems are instead of set of numbers less than, it would be more like, oh, all the children who are younger than eight. Do you see that? So, but that's no different than numbers. You got confused when I reduced the union. How did I do that? So let's, I'm just going to highlight that part. So what does it mean to be the union of these two sets? It means anything that's in either of these counts. You see that? So notice one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are on the right. So those count. So that's why I put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense? But then so is 9, 12, 15, 18. So then I got to also put in 9, 12, 15, 18. Because that's on the left. And that gives me the union. So union includes anything that's written down. Does that help? Okay, whereas intersection, it has to be written down both times. Union, as long as it's written somewhere, it counts. Any questions on that? Okay, that's kind of the idea of unions and intersections. I'm gonna mention, I'm gonna do this, but I think I need to show you with the homework and stuff because it'll be easier to see and too much drawing. But I wanna show you some pictures. And this is about Venn diagrams. And the way they're gonna look is you're gonna have circles. There's a circle. And there's another circle. Let's make this one transparent. And then there'll be a, maybe a third circle. Okay, and we may have, they may have labels in terms of like A, B, and C or something like that. And this is a diagram. So for example, if we look at this region, I think you can see my little tick mark going over it. Let me label them, otherwise we can't talk about it. So let's call this one A, just to be boring. Let's call this one B. Let's call this one C. And we also often do a universe. Universe is not as big as you think. Okay, so it's kind of an example of Venn diagram. And the idea is if I sh look at this region right here, I think you can all see what I'm pointing at. What is that in terms of sets? This little piece, it's kind of a top of a football. 
How do you write that with notation in sets or words? Okay, A comma B. Okay, intersection. It's actually a little more than that. So it, notice that this guy is in A. It's also in B, but it's not in C. It's outside of C. So this one is going to be, let's write it out. That'll be A intersection B. And let's see, with this, I can't do the shape. So I'll just go int <laughs> for intersection B. But then it must not be in C. What's what do I when it's not in C, that means it is in the complement of C. So intersection B complement. And again, I can't do notation here. Maybe I should, I know what I can do. I know how I can make the thing happen. I can save and close and then write it. So if I'm looking at this guy, that is going to be A intersection B intersection C complement any questions on why this little piece here this top football thing top piece of the football is written this way any questions on that okay this is called a Venn diagram this is this is a Venn diagram I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was named after a person named Ven. But don't quote me on that because it might be wrong. I think it was. Any questions at all on this idea? No. So would the bottom two be A intersection C intersection B complement? The so bottom you're looking two? right here, this, this guy here? Nope. The, this right one here? Down right there a little bit. Right this there. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, that would be, so this guy, let's write it out. Would be, well, it's got to be an A, right? It has to be in C, but it can't be in B. Is that clear? So can't be in B means that it's in B complement. But it must also be in C. Okay. That means it's an intersection with C. So you'd leave the letters the same, A, B, C, instead of A, C, intersection, B, complement? Technically, you could do either way. I just like alphabetical. Okay. But you could write A, C, A, intersection, C, intersection, B, complement. It just doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter. But I don't know. I think it's pretty alphabetical. <laughs> you decide. Okay, any questions on this idea? Okay, I do think it is worth um, looking at the homework on these because they have prettier pictures and we can talk about it. So let's go to the homework and see what they look like. It literally just takes too long for me to draw these guys. All right, pick a number from one to 12. Three, that's the one that I think I'm talking about. Three it is, this one? Oh no, it might've been the next. Okay, well, we'll still get three. <laughs> okay, survey asks, what beverage do you drink in the morning? And offers choices, tea only, coffee only, both coffee and tea, neither coffee nor tea, okay? The results are presented in the following Venn diagram, where each number represents the count within the smallest enclosed region that contains the number. So you see, this is way too long for me to type all out and stuff. That's why I'm kind of going through this. On the whole. How many people drink only tea in the morning? 20. Yeah, 
So that means that you drink tea, but you don't drink coffee. That's kind of T intersection C complement. Do you see that? And that's 26. How many people drink tea in the morning? Yeah, so that's gonna be the 26 plus the 11 for all the tea drinkers, mm -hmm. which is 37. Any questions on that? I'm gonna mute you because we're getting a little feedback, if that's okay. But I'm mute if you have questions you wanna talk. Okay, how many people do not drink tea? Well, what numbers are the not tea drinkers? The 41 and also the 13. 13 means they don't drink either. That's me, I drink water in the morning. So that would be 41 plus 13, which is 54. Okay, how many people are surveyed? How do we find out how many people are surveyed? Yeah, add them up. So the nice thing is we've already got some. For example, 37 of these guys, and then 54 of these guys. So you just add those up, and you get 91. Any questions on that? Just a note to get you ready, because this is how you're going to use it. What's the probability that somebody chosen at random drinks both tea and coffee? Any ideas? What's the probability that someone chosen at random drinks tea and coffee in the morning? And the Venn diagram should help. That's the whole point of the Venn diagram. Well, how many tea, how many people drink both tea and coffee? 11. And if you're doing probability, you take the people that count, that's the 11, divided by all the total people. So good, 11 over 91 will be the probability that someone drinks both tea and coffee. Any questions on this idea? So you wanted to see another one, a different one that you got stuck on? Yes, that to yourself, Stag. So I think I had on me um, just one that had the A intersection, B intersection, C complement. So I'll go find it. Yeah, by the way, I put you on mute because it was, it was getting too fast. Do you remember which one? Otherwise, you can go through and look at them. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, I'll just start grabbing some. That's, that's a perfect one right there. Okay. That was a lot of a lot of talking on this one, which is good. Okay. And you can see if it just takes a long time to type this out, that's why I think looking over the homework is probably a better way for this type because they're long paragraphs with a big fancy picture. Okay. Um, and you can imagine how hard this, I programmed this sucker in the computer to draw this picture. <laughs> that took a lot of work. Okay. Not to mention programming all this wording. Suppose that a group of 91 college students, oh, 91. That's just a random 91 again. It's not always going to be 91. Just a warning. <laughs> um, were surveyed asking which sports between volleyball, soccer, and basketball did they play in high school? Of those 16, only played volleyball. 11 played only soccer. 17 played basketball. 19 played volleyball and soccer, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll let you read it. Okay. Each number of the Venn diagram represents the count within the smallest enclosed region that contains that number. And zero if it's nobody. Okay, so what I want to do, so we have to fill in all the numbers, right? Why don't we just go through the numbers and put them in? So 16 only played volleyball. Where did I put that? Right under volleyball. Yeah, so the very top number is the 16 because all the other ones played something else or not or didn't play volleyball. 11 only played soccer. Okay, where is the only soccer? Under the soccer. Yeah, that's the under the soccer, pink. 
So that's 11. And then let's keep reading. 17 only played basketball. Where's that? In the green under the basketball. Yeah, so that's 17 under the basketball. Okay, 19 played both volleyball and soccer. Now that, that one's gonna be a little harder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's the problem. 19 played both volleyball and soccer. So both volleyball and soccer is that one and that one. Do you see that? So that tells you if you add those two up, you get 19. So we're not ready for that yet. Is that clear? Similarly, 14 played both basketball and volleyball. Okay, that is this one and this one, wait a minute. Um, 14 played both basketball and volleyball. Ah, uh, you know, I think I, I didn't I actually did not program this one. If I did, I would have, I wouldn't have written it quite this way. So, what it really means is they say but play both volleyball and soccer. They mean and didn't play the other. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, this makes no sense. Otherwise, it's impossible. Let's read this one more time. 17 played only basketball. Okay, so we got that. 19 played volleyball and soccer only is what they meant. Okay. So volleyball and soccer only, which one is that? The pink one. Pink and blue. Yeah. And that's what they meant by the 19. 14 played basketball and volleyball. And that means didn't play the other. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Otherwise, you can't do it. That's 14. That's one way of dealing with logic is that otherwise, you can't add these up and get 14 because that would be a negative. Okay. So let's read some more. Where was I? Six played soccer and basketball only. Yeah. So basketball, soccer only would be that six right there. Let's keep going. Seven played all three. All three is right in the middle. Okay. What are we missing? Zero. Missing this guy. Well, we don't know if that's zero yet. How do we find out what that one is? Oh, we add them all up to see if it's 91. Exactly. Add them up, subtract from 91. So let's add them up. 16 and 14 is 30, 49, 56, 62, 73, 83, 90. So one plus zero. Yep. That means there's one. That was me, by the way. <laughs> I didn't play basketball, volleyball, or soccer in high school. And I guess what I did? You tutored math for his <laughs> less unfortunate ones. No, nah, I don't want to. You ski. You probably skied. No? No? I was an actor. <laughs> oh, drama. Yeah, right. I was in drama. Drama people can't do the sports, so they don't have time. After. Yep. Oh, yeah. So I didn't do volleyball, basketball, or soccer. So I'd be that one. Yeah, I did drama. I acted with Val Kilmer, Kevin Spacey. You've heard of them? <laughs> so I'm not kidding. When I was little. <laughs> okay, they were in my sister's high school, so they were, they were, they were just kids. Okay, any questions at all on this example? No, I think I got really lost when it was the 16 or like the 19 played volleyball and soccer. I didn't know which one of those spots to put it in. But now you understand? Yeah. Good, good. Because that's the whole point. That's the whole point of these webinars, by the way. <laughs> okay, let me tell you about the final. I think I want to move to the final. It's 7 o'clock. 
and it's time to go into the final. I might go a little longer than normal this time because we got all the content, and this is the last day of of the webinar. So I want to be a, I want to do the closing, you know, talking about the final and stuff. So the final exam. Let me go to it, but I want to let you know I'm going to show you the final. I'm going to give you a preview of the final. That doesn't mean those are the questions you get. Um, because everyone gets different questions. So if I go back to the syllabus, and then I go and scroll to the bottom, there's a lot of ways of getting to the final. You can go to your calendar, there's all kinds of things. I tend to use the syllabus. And I click on final. It won't look, it might not look exactly the same to you. But I want to know, you're not a teacher. <laughs> so you don't get to reset. You make a mistake, you made your mistake. Got it? OK. So first thing, I'm going to, even though you can't do this, um, will it even let me do it? Where, why is it not letting me do it? Here we go. I'm going to edit assignment settings, even though not really going to, just so I can show you what I did. So you can't get to this page. So first thing is 27 points. Any guess on what that means? Any guess? Yeah, 27 questions. So one point per question. Is that clear? There's 27 points. OK. Um, this, you won't know what it means. But what I will tell you what this means is that this comes from the homework system. So it's going to look just like homework questions. OK. Um, and you'll notice that it is due 11.59 PM on June 24th. That does not mean that's when you have to do it. I don't recommend trying to finish it you know, just before midnight on June 24th, because if you have no internet, you have a disaster. Does that make sense? But it's also available from June 28th. Got it? So that means, uh, June 18th, not 28th. So June 18th is three days from today. That does not mean I'm going to tell you you should take it June 18th. But what I want to do, because this, this is a truly online class, unlike uh, what we call EVE classes, which are regular LTCC classes that got forced into online. Okay, You guys, you, you, whether you remember or not, by enrolling in this class, you committed to be an online student. In, Whereas my other classes, they signed up as face-to-face -face students and then they got switched because of, of the pandemic. But this is actually an online class, which means that I can't tell you that this is the time you have to take the final. So I'm giving you a window of six days. Got that? So a window of six days between basically June 19th and June 24th. You could take it any of those days. Any questions on that? OK, um, I think, just a second. I thought it said somewhere. Oh, it might be in my open math. OK, the way this is set, Oh, here we go. A link to the content. No, the way this is set is that you have two hours to take it. And so you have two hours to take it. And it's like the midterm, where if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You don't get to try again. OK, one of the reasons I'm doing that is that's how your stats class is going to be. I will tell you there's some big differences between this final and the statistics final. OK, one of the big differences is the statistics final uses Proctorio. So that with when you take stats, you're going to have a webcam watching you. OK, because that's higher stakes. 
So that's a that's one very big difference. And you're not gonna be able to open up other computer screens or anything like that. You're not gonna be able to get help or, you know, which you shouldn't be doing anyway. You should practice without doing that. But I figure there's no reason to cheat on this one, so you shouldn't have to. Does that make sense? The other big difference is in the stats one, it'll be um, essay questions instead of just click a multiple choice or fill in a blank. You're gonna have to write sentences and turn and click submit, which means I'll read and grade your sentences instead of the computer. So I do wanna let you know what, that there is differences between this and stats. And that's one of the main ones. This is a lot of writing in stats. So you're gonna be doing a lot of typing in the stats class. Whereas this class is more arithmetic kind of stuff. So it's more put in the number. Any questions on that? Okay, so now let's go back. Because I just did the assignment settings. I think I'm going to see preview. And then it'll look like what you're going to look at. Does this look somewhat familiar? Not the all the words, but the feeling of the question. Okay. So maybe we'll just do this one for fun. I'm not going to do 27 of you know. The formula for estimating the number of people in that need to be surveyed in order to have a specified margin of error with a specified level of confidence for the proportion of people with heart disease is approximated by n equals z squared over 4 e squared, where z equals 1.954, depends on the level of confidence, and e is the margin of error. How many people need to be surveyed if the margin of error is 0 0.011? So how do you do this? What do we have to do? It's not that hard if you know what to do. It's not a trick question or anything. You have to plug in what you do know. Mm -hmm. D and the oh. E. Exactly. We know Z. We know E. And I'm going to write it out, and then we'll plug it in. So we have uh, 1.954, just so you can see it. You'll be doing this on a piece of paper, probably, and then putting in your final answer. But for you to see it, I can type it. One, uh, one point nine five four squared, and then we're supposed to divide by parentheses, and the parentheses is really important. Four times e, which is point zero one one squared, and the parentheses. Then I'm going to copy that. I'm going to pop it into my calculator, and I get 78.88694. So let me copy and paste. Yeah. And then I'll just copy and paste it in. Okay, you can write it on a piece of paper and then type it in, but I'm a copy and paste guy. Uh, there we go. Any questions on that? Please round your answer up to the earliest whole number. Okay. What if we didn't? I'm going to pretend we didn't read that. And I'm going to submit the question. Okay. I don't recommend doing that. I just want to show you. You'll notice there is no place to try again. Do you see that? You can see the answer. Which is 7889. Did I lose a decimal? You, lo you lost the zero that was in front of the 11. Ah, that matters. But even if I didn't, I was trying to get it wrong on purpose. There we go. Look at that, you didn't have to get it wrong on purpose. <laughs> There's a seven, eight, eight, nine. Do you see that? But had I, had, if you get it wrong, you got it wrong. You can't try again. Is that clear? 
that's the, again, it's the big deal is that even if I had gone, you know, wrong by not reading the question or whatever, you can't try again. So make sure that you check your work. So I purposely got it wrong so I could show you what it looks like. And there's no chance. Whereas your homework, you always get to try again. Is that clear? Okay. And then there are, as you can guess, 26. And I got question 26, 21 wrong, one wrong. I think earlier I got 27 wrong when I was playing around. Okay, and if you get it right, you get it right. Any questions on how the test is going to go? Not too bad. Okay, uh, so I don't think there's much left to say about the final. What's the way to study for it? Practice homework. Yeah, practice homework, because these are homework problems. OK, you probably won't have time to do every homework problem that ever happened in the class. But you can still practice and get ideas on each. Any questions on that? So practice homework problems, no surprises on this test. Um, everybody's going to get a different test, because they're just randomly grabbed. One problem from every homework assignment. There are 27 assignments. Sound fair? And you have two hours. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank you. You guys uh, all had great attitudes. I don't think I had any complainers in this class. Usually I get some complainers. <laughs> and I know this is hard times. You know, some of you are financially troubled. Some of you are socially or whatever troubled. And I, I hope that goes away someday, but at least you're here learning math and moving ahead in your education, which is helpful. So, you know, make the best of it. And that includes, you know, next quarter also, make the best of it, you know, move forward in your education and try to keep what you learn in this class through when you take the next quarter. Okay, you're gonna hear these words again Okay, you're gonna have to do stuff with things like margin of error. Those words are gonna come out. You have to know what they mean next quarter. But the idea is at least you've heard the words and maybe it'll familiarize a little bit. Okay, or level of confidence. That's a big word next quarter. Okay, all this stuff happens. So I do wanna let you know that there's a lot of language in next quarter's class, in the statistics class. So hopefully, you got some of these ideas. So I want to mention one more thing before we say goodbye. And that is, there is no excuse to not get 100% in the next discussion post. I don't know if anyone's looked at it. Because it's an easy, easy. All you have to do is do it on time. And I promise you'll get it right. Because it's not math. So that's just a note. Um, you will get 100% if you do it on time. Remember, Thursday is on time for the initial, Sundays for the final. And that's how the class will go. Um, the grades in the course, I'll be submitting them prob probably the end of next week. My goal is Friday, I can celebrate and be done and have my summer off to go backpacking. Open Star Lake on the Saturday night, um, depending on weather. But the point is, is that um, I'm not a procrastinator and I'll make sure, I don't know if you noticed when like, when I grade your discussion assignments, it's not like it takes me a week, does it? Okay, I usually, do, I try and do it in the morning on Monday. Um, so similarly, um, I'll get your grades in, but you may not be able to see your final grade until the following Tuesday because that's when the college opens it up. That's possible. So just a note. If you email me, I'll let you know what you got, but um, Canvas will show you too. Any questions about anything? I think I'm gonna stop the share. Any questions? Maybe I'll even stop the recording. I wanna thank you all for the class and for having good attitudes. Um, hopefully this is what, you know, this is a help for you to pass the stats class. 
that's all that really matters in terms of learning this class. Okay, I think I'm going to stop the recording and say goodbye to everybody, at least that are watching this as an archive webinar. <laughs>